Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. People oftentimes mistaken the Empire's massive military force as a sign that Palpatine's economic reforms and industrial policies were a huge success. But if you take a peek beneath the hood and see how the Imperial military industrial complex actually works, you'll be surprised by how inefficient and low-tech it actually is. I'd argue that the Empire's military first political agenda is what ultimately doomed Palpatine more than anything else. Not only did it create a poorly designed and inferior military product, despite what propaganda might want you to see, Palpatine's political agenda was disastrous for the economy. And at the end of the day, a democracy, human rights, social issues all come second to the most important thing. It's the economy, stupid. And while Palpatine exploited the growing wealth inequality and cost of living crisis in the Republic in its waning days, when he took power and declared himself Emperor of the Galaxy, he seemed to have completely forgotten this extremely important factor in a government's ability to maintain power. If you don't provide economic opportunities for the people, you will be overthrown or replaced. Whilst doing our recent video about the separate destroyed army, I was shocked by just how cheap all of the various war machines deployed by the Confederacy were. Now, a lot of these cost savings come from the fact that the Separatist military industrial complex was made up of mega conglomerates who, over the centuries, have completely vertically integrated their systems. By controlling the cost of materials, the cost of labor, the cost of transportation, and the cost of manufacturing, the Separatist Alliance were able to scale up their production of military hardware and produce it all at rates that were simply unbeatable. Since the Clone Wars was orchestrated by the Sith, and the Confederacy of Invented Systems was the brainchild of Palpatine, the assumption has always been that the Separatist war machine was just the test run for Palpatine's eventual Imperial military. An experiment to see just how efficient of a military industrial complex you can create if you have complete political control. A lot of people don't draw this connection because in many ways the end result of this industrial system, despite sharing many qualities with the Empire, created an end result in the Separate Destroyed Army that looked nothing like the Imperial military. And one of the key differences between the Separate Destroyed Army and the Imperial military is the former's dependence on automation in Separatist factories and also in its military force. Simply put, the Confederacy used droids to create droids to create droids. And this was mainly due to two factors. The Confederacy of Independent Systems was completely eclipsed by the Republic when it came to overall wealth and also manpower. The Seppies needed a wild card, some type of multiplier that could increase the amount of products they can get from their limited resources. And they found that wild card through automation plus mass manufacturing. The Galactic Empire, on the other hand, uh, wanted the same thing as the Confederacy of Independent Systems, which was a massive military force, which was cost efficient, but they seemed to rely far more on sentient labor. Whether it was via private corporations like Krillian Engineering Corporation, Han Solo's father apparently used to work on the YT-1300 line, or Imperial Aligned Corporations like Senior Fleet Systems. The company had a pretty massive operation on the world of the fall, utilizing former farmers whose lands were seized for mining operation. And then of course you had prison labor complexes like Narkina 5, used to manufacture whole plating for the Death Star. And then finally there were even rumors of slave labor being used in the Imperial Industrial Military Complex. <laughs> Now, from a purely economic point of view, uh, using sentient labor for all of your production is kind of confusing. It doesn't really align with the Empire's goal of creating a powerful economy and military. Because of the inherent drawbacks that comes with using sentient labor for manufacturing and industrial work. Automation is extremely important in the long term for improving efficiency, reducing product costs, and enhancing the overall product quality. The drawback of automation is that it does remove a certain amount of jobs from the market. Ideally, automation can remove the more dangerous, hazardous, and mundane jobs that are not really sought out by workers in the first place. These kind of jobs can also lead to additional costs for employers when it comes to hazard pay and reimbursement for health issues. Obviously, the latter is heavily dependent on the rules and regulation in your uh, government system, which under imperial rule was lax or just simply not followed. But politics and work culture aside, if we just take a look at market you know, forces, usually when there are advances in automation and technology, it's the lower skilled jobs, the jobs that are pretty repetitive that get replaced, and then Usually, higher skilled jobs, uh, jobs that are a bit more customized, are the ones that survive and, if anything, become easier because of automation. For instance, take a job like imaging specialist for Starship space frames. These are highly trained technicians who take a look at scans of 
you know, fuselages and, and space frames and try to detect fractures and other weaknesses that might mean that part of the uh, spaceship needs replacement or repair. This is an extremely important and serious job that keeps a fleet operational, but this is also a job that can be easily replaced by AI software that is trained to find those uh, same weaknesses in images. Now, on the other hand, a job like being a Starship mechanic is going to be a lot harder to replace simply because these jobs require a lot more flexibility, problem solving, and even creativity. There are maintenance droids and other automatons in the Star Wars galaxy that can replace a lot of the more repetitive and dangerous and hard work that a maintenance worker might need to go through. But the overall maintenance project still needs to be monitored by a sentient worker. And so in the automation landscape, uh, individuals with those more repetitive jobs are going to find it increasingly hard to find more job opportunities, which can lead to them even exiting the workforce eventually, which is really just not good for society. In an ideal situation, uh, any gains that corporations or the government has from automation will be reinvested into either retraining um, employees whose jobs have disappeared or training the next generation to have the skills necessary for those future jobs. Although in practice, this rarely seems to happen. You guys might remember that whole uh, teach truckers and miners how to code. I mean, this is a good intentioned program that just was not well thought out. If anything, coding and programming, at least the basic types, will be replaced by automation or have already been replaced. Of course, in the Empire, there are no such considerations for what happens to workers as Palpatine viewed individuals as more like commodities, uh, numbers on a spreadsheet that he could exploit. Any attempts to unionize in any sector in the Empire usually led to a swift crackdown, usually by the military. The harsh reality is during periods of rapid automation, people in the job market have to be more careful than ever when it comes to which industries they choose to work in. This isn't about being fair or being kind. This is just the harsh reality of what happens when you're in a period of rapid growth and development. Um, when you are labor, you're always going to have a lot less power than those who have the capital. The plus side of this environment is that automation allows companies to free up capital that otherwise would be spent on labor and now it can be switched over to more research and upgrades. That is, if you are in a healthy, competitive economy that is not you know, controlled or dominated or by giant gatekeepers, monopolies, and oligopolies. There is also an argument that the advances these companies make will benefit society either through direct technological advancements or just increasing access to existing technologies. For instance, if automation can lower the cost of constructing astromechs, that can make them more affordable to the average spacer, which makes flying a lot easier and safer. You could also lower the cost of speeders so that more families can be mobile and look for opportunities outside of their local neighborhoods. In the long run, automation does seem to yield good results, not just for the corporations, but for society as whole, as long as uh, the proceeds that these companies gain are reinvested into society, which again, doesn't always happen. Which is a shame because automation does create new jobs, but these are jobs that usually require a lot more skill, which of course requires training and investment. But more specific to Palpatine's desires and goals, uh, automation without reinvestment into society can be very bad, can be horrible even for the average laborer. With his massive state-controlled military industrial complex reaping all of the financial benefits of automation, Palpatine could increasingly make his entire economic system less dependent on workers and their desires and demands. Palpatine clearly does not want to hear or be beholden to the demands of workers. He really just wants power for himself. One could argue that if he had followed the separatist model of mass manufacturing using automation, he could have reached his goal of securing the galaxy with a massive military force at a much quicker and more sustainable rate. So, if automation is so great, then why does Palpatine rely so heavily on sentient labor for his military industrial complex? Well, I'm sad to inform fans of the Empire, it's your usual Sith short-term thinking and immorality that dooms the Imperial economy. A lot of times in life, having empathy for every party in an economic arrangement is the best path forward. A lot of people believe that to operate successfully in the business world, one has to maintain dominance in some sort of zero-sum game, when in reality, Cooperation, mutually beneficial arrangements, leads to actual wealth, which is built over the course of not just decades, like the short-lived empire, but thousands of years, like the Republic. If you operate with a zero-sum games mentality, you're going to create a toxic and challenging environment that is going to waste a lot of your resources and lead to more failures than successes. This applies to a lot of things you do in life. 
Palpatine at the end of the Clone Wars inherited a mess that he had created himself. The Clone Wars was a masterful way for Palpatine to take control over the Republic politically, but both the Galactic Republic and the Confederacy of Independent Systems borrowed heavily and irresponsibly during the war from the intergalactic banking clans. It was actually a pretty wild and crazy situation. When the CIS folded and lost the war, it was severely in debt, as was the Republic. With the banking clans losing all of their interest payments in principle from these loans they gave out, they were also on the verge of collapsing, and the IGBC basically represented all of the banking interests in the galaxy. So Palpatine's nationalization of the banking clans wasn't just an attempt to uh, create a federal reserve. It was also done to hide what essentially was a massive failure of the banking system that should have led to a huge recession along with hyperinflation. Palpatine was essentially forced to expand the military industrial complex and also replace the Grand Army of the Republic, despite the fact that it was just four years old at the time. He needed to create jobs and stimulate growth at a time when if he didn't, well, he probably would have lost power because of the massive amount of unemployment and poverty uh, the war would have created. Now, the problem with automation is that upfront, it is extremely cost intensive and considered a more long-term investment. First, a good deal of research and development needs to be done and planning to create the proper tools for your newly automated factories. And then there are the investments for the construction of these factories, which can be massive. It could take years or even decades of production for these factories to make their money back. And at the same time, you're going to need to upgrade these factories in order for them to create new products or become more efficient. Basically, these are very risky and difficult endeavors to start. That's why publicly traded American companies typically focus just on design and outsource their manufacturing. It's far more profitable and less risky for shareholders, especially in the short term. I know there's been a lot of talk about bringing manufacturing back to a country like the United States, but there are a lot of factors that would say it's actually not a good idea or even possible given the cost structure of this country. Anyway, the empire would have needed to spend even more money to essentially automate the Republic's factories and foundries Money that it didn't have. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at most of the early Imperial projects, they weren't funded by government contracts or subsidies. Instead, Palpatine usually used the military or his political powers to get what he wanted, usually through nationalization of assets. Same thing goes with his nationalization of entire planets and systems full of resources. Palpatine was cash poor, so he used his political power. Now, traditional factories with workers on the assembly line require far less specialized machinery and integrated systems. They're also cheaper to build. Sentient labor provides you with a certain degree of flexibility. You can also retrain individuals to do different things or give them different tools. And since the Empire has a massive amount of unemployed individuals due to the previous war, employing them was an ideal solution for a lot of problems. But there's a problem with the Empire's military first kind of mentality. At first, you know, in the early days, that initial amount of money will stimulate growth and create more jobs. But overall, investing in your military does not actually expand the size of the economy and create value in the same way that, let's say, the tech sector or service industries will. Especially when you cannot export your military products to other nations and factions because you are the only faction in the galaxy. And so without other sectors of the economy growing as well, government coffers will eventually run dry pretty quickly when tax revenue falls behind military spending. And that's really a huge problem the Empire started facing within just a few years of them taking power. Not only was there not enough money to uh, automate a lot of their factories, making them cheaper and more efficient to run, it was becoming also increasingly hard to employ laborers at a fair wage. We'll see the conditions of the average worker go from okay to pretty terrible as the Empire ages. And once the Galactic Civil War kicks into high gear, the Empire had to actually use a good portion of their military to keep workers from rioting or even leaving their jobs. This is why the Empire had to eventually rely on prison labor and slave labor. These are relatively low cost ways to boost your productivity in the short run. But free labor like this ultimately stunts your economic growth even further because there's essentially no need to improve your manufacturing processes and innovate to decrease your costs or make your operations more efficient. As now the best way to increase manufacturing is by increasing your amount of slaves or prisoners. If you take a look at the public resentencing order directive, that was not just a punitive measure created by the Empire in response to the Aldani heist. It was also a way for Palpatine to fill his prisons with more labor so that he could transition from a paid workforce to a slave prison workforce. 
This is the gruesome truth about the imperial economy. Palpatine might have claimed that he was creating more security and prosperity for the average citizen, but uh, if you take a look at the numbers, that's clearly not what happened. The reality was his entire economic plan was based off an unsustainable model that would increasingly exploit the labor of the galaxy, which resulted in less tax revenue for the government, a lack of investment in better technologies, and more pissed off people with pitchforks and X-Wings. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is the Republic to Democracy. I'll see you next time.